Hello, I'm Rob Waddington. Uh, I'm here on Rutland Water. I'm a professional guide and instructor. I uh, have a little B&B &B on the water here as well. Um, but one, of, one of my main jobs is to teach beginners. And today, I'm actually just going to show you what you do when you get your first reel, your first line, how you put it all together. Okay, so we've got new reel here. Really sexy little thing, that's beautiful, isn't it? Uh, and a brand new line. Now, all these lines, most of these lines are about 30 yards long. So, so you could probably cast 20, 25, even 30 yards. If you get a big fish on, it might take you another 30 or 40 yards, especially here on Rutland Water. So we don't put the fly line straight onto the reel. First of all, we need to back it up with some very strong and quite inexpensive backing. This is what I've got here, very strong. Um, now, uh, poly, poly micro backing. It's quite thin, quite inexpensive, uh, but you could use anything. You could use you could use string if you like. It's just something to back you up. So first of all, I'm going to show you how we tie the backing onto the fly onto the fly reel. We're going to tie the backing onto the fly reel here. So first of all, I'm going to tie a little knot into the backing. That's simple enough. Just a knot, okay, and just clip that off. Then I'm just going to wrap this around the cylinder of the reel here. Just so it comes out the other end. And then that bit with the knot in, I'm just going to tie another knot in it, but this time incorporating the, the main piece of backing. You see that? Now this is going to be like a slip knot, it's going to pull tight and then it's going to eventually tighten on the, the initial knot and that's as tight and as strong as you like and the good thing about this is as you reel the, as you reel the spool it's not going to slip. Okay so it's important that we reel the backing, same with the fly line, the same way it was reeled on the spool in the first place like this. So this is where you need a friend. Anybody back? Graham? Yes. Uh, yeah, yes. Fine. Stick the pen in there. Hold it like that for me. And put it slightly under pressure, sir. Just put my fingers on the rim there. Yeah, yeah on the slightly edge. under pressure. And I'm reeling it on there like this. And you can see... I'm using my finger to lay it onto the line nice and smoothly. Back and forward. Now I'm a right-handed fly fisherman, I cast with my right, but I reel with my left. And keep going. Okay, well I'm going to prepare the fly line to go onto the backing now. Um, this is a brand new fly line, it, it's ended up with a cut edge here. They usually have a little sticker on the fly line to tell you which end to attach to the backing or to the reel because I can tell you that these lines are specially designed, the profile is specially made, you can't put it on the wrong way around, you've got to put it on the right way around, so they always have a little tag to tell you. Now I've got a little trick here, a little, little tip on how you can attach this fly line to the backing. Let me show you. First of all I'm just going to cut the packaging off this. And there's the bit that says attach this end to the reel. Take that off. Now, what I'm going to do, get some nail polish remover, dip this in about the first four inches of this, and this eventually is going to take all the plastic coating, re revealing the inner core. Table here, stick that down there. And leave that. Leave that for about five minutes. There we go. Thank you, Graham. Can do the uh, hand shot, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we've got the backing on the reel. It's a bit of a judgment thing here. I reckon that's about enough for today. Um, that's the backing on. I'm going to tie a loop at the end of this backing. Uh, I'm going to put, put a fairly big one on, and I'll show you why later. Big, big long loop like this. And then just uh, one. Don't want any 
massive knot, so that's perfectly good enough, perfectly strong. Just leave that for the moment, and let's have a look at see how the fly line's doing in, in my nail varnish remover. I feel that's not quite soft now and I should be able to just, there we go, look, it's just pulling that off there, pulling the outer core, pulling the outer covering of the plastic, leaving the thin inner core and I'm just pulling enough off to give myself a, a bit of room to tie another loop. Now this is slightly heavier, slightly thicker than the backing. I'm, trying, I'm going to use a different loop knot on here. I'm going to use a loop called a perfection loop. Um, it is quite, it looks quite complicated, but you know, look online, some great instructional videos how to use this. It's a, it's, it's a nice loop. Just create a loop here between your fingers and then another loop over here. Bring it round over your, uh, over your, over your fingers here and then between the two loops that you've made and then reach in and pull that there once you get used to that it takes seconds and it's a great little knot uh, perfection loop I think now then, I'll show you why we use the big, the big loop. I'm going to push the one loop inside the other. And then I can put the whole loop around this fly reel box. And it should have a nice, can you see that? Loop to loop connection. The reason why I put a long loop on this side is occasionally I might want to change that line. Um, I do a lot of salmon fishing and I change my, 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 my main line quite often. And you don't, have to take, you don't have to take everything apart. Just slip it around the reel and you can take it off again. Okay, we're going to wind the line on the, on the reel. The same thing as with the backing. It's got to come off the same way it was put on. So I'm going to give it to my trusty friend Graham again. With a special pen, special biro. There we go. It's just that bit here. And I'm just going to keep it nice and oh, it's, it doesn't want to be tight there, it wants to be quite loose. I'm put it on the, the, I'm just keep that loose there. Go it. Yeah. Very loose. Free spooling. Free, fr sorry, free spooling, yeah. Now the thing about this backing is you might never see it again. <laughs> you might never see it again. You might in your whole angling life never see that backing, but tell me, let me tell you, if you get a big fish, especially here on Rutland, and it sets off, you'll need that backing. So, there we go, riding that on the reel. It's a weight forward line, so the bit I'm reeling in now is thin, then it will thicken up and taper down at the end. And that's the end. Now, just let me just explain that thickness and thinness, the profile. Um, most of the weight on these fly lines are at the front end of it. It's uh, when it hits the water, it's quite it's quite narrowly tapered. It's quite a thin line, and then about three feet, four feet, it, it tapers out. Can you see that? The difference between that and there. And there's about ten yards of this thick stuff, and then the rest of it's thin again. It makes it easy to cast. But look, we've got a we've got a, sh a cut end at the end, uh, and we're going to need to tie a leader on. So the best way to to tie a leader onto this is to attach a braided loop to the end of this fly line and I'm just going to show you how we do it. Okay, we're going to we're going to use a braided loop at the end. This is a braided loop. You buy these ready-made. It's uh, it's a basically a braided tube. 
And if you can see, if I push it together, it opens up. So if we thread the fly line through here, it acts as one of those finger traps. You can put your finger in, but you can't pull it out. So let's have a go at this. Bit, bit fiddly, but once you get the, once you get it started, it's, it's not, not too bad. I've managed to get the, get it in to start with, and then it's quite an easy job now to snake it in, if you like. Push it, pull it back there, push it in, pull it back there, push it in, pull it back, and it's actually working its way up the fly line now. About that distance is fine. Now, what I'm going to do now is just going to trim off the loose edges. When I was getting it in the first place, when I was pushing the, the loop in in the first place, I created a few little loose bits. So I'm just going to chop those off there. Now then, they always come with a, a plastic or rubber sleeve at the top here. And if you can see, I'm going to pull that down. I'm going to do this a bit fast because if you if you do it slow it kind of jams in so I'm going to just move that down just to cover the end of the braided loop there tiny little bit of super glue Use a bit of plastic cotton bud here just to dip it in. Capillary action will just actually take that through into the sleeve. That's one side, and then just a little bit on the other side. Not too much, not too much at all. Just a little bit, little dub. And there you go. The harder you pull that, the tighter it is. You've got a lovely loop, no knots. The perfect way to tie the leader on the end of the fly line. So my reel's ready, my backing's attached, my fly line's on. I want you to I want to show you now how we tie a leader onto the onto the onto the fly line. Now leaders are very important when we're fishing. Uh, leaders are the stuff that the fish might see. It's also the stuff that the, the fish might snap. I'm not going to snap this fly line. In fact, the only way that's going to snap is if you trap it around the propeller and set off. But we're not going to do that, are we? <laughs> Lead is very important. Now we have very clear water on Rutland water, Grafham water, a lot of the smaller still waters. We don't want the fish to see this leader at all. So I'm using something called fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon has the same refractive index as water. Reflects light in the same way. Basically what it means is when it's, in, when it's underwater, it's basically invisible. That's perfect, it's fantastic light. Uh, not a lot of carp guys are now using fluorocarbon. The also, also the other good thing is it's slightly heavier than water as well. So it cuts down through the surface film. So we don't see any lines where it's touching the water. Fluorocarbon is great stuff. Eight pound minimum on Rutland water, please. Some of these fish are quite big. The takes are quite aggressive. Um, I used to use six pound breaking strain when I first arrived here. And some of the smash takes don't give you any chance at all to hang on to the fish. Eight pound minimum, ten, maybe even that. And what I'm going to do is just tie the end to the fly, to the, to the braided loop. Simple, simple, simple stuff. A five turn half blood knot. Pull that through the loop. You've got a short end and you've got a long end. Just wrap the short end round the long end five times. Four, five. And then the tag that you've got, put it through the loop you've made. Now with fluorocarbon, that's all you need. We're not going to tuck it round again. Fluorocarbon is slightly stiffer than normal monofilament. So it doesn't draw up. The more turns you have on, the, the kind of the weaker it is. So five half turn, five turn half blood knot is fine. Draw that up. At this stage, I'm going to moisten it. Sorry about that. But it just stops any friction weakening the line and then draw it up just 
strong as anything. Uh, length of the lead, as long as you can get away with, really. If we're using a single fly, um, I'll probably start off at 12 feet and maybe work up from there. Um, if we're using some droppers, we can talk about that at another time. Uh, maybe six foot, four foot, four foot, you know, t whatever, 20, whatever. Long leader. But there you are. Great. So that's what to do when you get the new fly line, your new reel. Make sure you pack it, pack enough backing to make sure the line comes to the, to the, to the outside of the reel here. Big reels, small reels, whatever. You need that backing and you're ready to go. Off you go, have a great time, enjoy your fishing.